All right, so we're going to go over my uh, body lapse presentation. A um, few things real quick. This is the body lapse logo. Uh, Aaron Nolan, a student at Virginia Tech, helped me develop it. Um, our sponsors are obviously uh, Panasonic, who um, they are the maker of the HVX200 high definition camera that can shoot 60 frames a second. Uh, it's the camera that we're using to record this project in. Um, they didn't directly sponsor this, but uh, we did purchase it uh, from them. Uh, this obviously took place or was started at Virginia Tech. Um, it was uh, originated from a student uh, initiative grant system in the College of Architecture and Urban Sciences. Um, General Lift is the company based out of uh, El Segundo, California that uh, builds these Cooper control, motion control uh, computer systems and the uh, head that we used. Um, to mount the camera on. Um, this whole thing was captured and edited on a Mac. All the footage is captured on a MacBook Pro um, and composited together in After Effects. Uh, not an official sponsor, but AT&T was the carrier that we were using with the iPhone to transmit all the data. And Red Lightning is a software manufacturer that uh, they've written this software that allows you to record directly into the computer over the FireWire feed and also do real-time overlay of two images or two video streams. So that was very key to this project. And let's begin. So an overview of my thesis is that uh, body lapse is a visualization of changes in the body using high-definition cameras to create both narrative and non-narrative interactive animations of the body changing in three dimensions, time, weight, and space. It's a visualization of health, uh, the body, food, exercise. Um, you see the process of weight management rather than following the numbers. So basically, uh, this is an exercise and visualization where you're seeing weight loss and you're seeing the correlations between weight loss, food intake, exercise, etc. Uh, and it all culminates in these uh, series of animations. Simply, uh, it's animations of my body as I get in shape. Uh, why am I doing this? Um, the first reason is I need to get in shape. Um, that's the biggest reason. But I need to combine what I need to do with what I love to do, which is obviously uh, making movies and working in computer animation. Um, this was me when I was uh, a little bit younger and in very, in very good shape playing a lot of sports in high school. And then uh, this is, you know, the combination of that with how I got into computers and animation and um, filmmaking. So uh, yeah, that's me with a steady cam working on a movie. Uh, it's same, or different movie, same director. And another different movie, same director. That's a Panavision camera. A little bit too expensive for this project to use. So I'll give you guys an overview real quick of what you're going to see in this video. Um, the first part we're going to talk about is how we captured body lapse. And uh, that I'll talk about the camera systems, the methodology, etc. Uh, the second part is building the tools that will support the project, uh, the iPhone tracker, etc. And then the last is kind of a commentary on what this project is about in the bigger sense, um, being the documentation generation and things like that, blogging, twittering. Uh, using uh, mobile tools to better your life. Um, let's talk about Body Lapse 1.0, which is when I started this whole thing in 2006 in Steve Harrison and Dave Webster's uh, Cyber Arts class. You can see the original version. This is a video of my original version, which was made with a D50 uh, DSLR camera over the course of about two and a half months, where I lost 15 pounds and put on a little bit of muscle. And it was just kind of a test. It was real rough with the tracking markers. Um, but you could see the kind of beginnings of what I was looking to do. Uh, there was no computer software that could do a live feed, so I had to try to align this really roughly optically through a, um optical viewfinder in the camera and just tape markings on the floor. And it, it you know, it worked fairly well, but um, it got people uh, excited a little bit to see how far this can go and that's why I decided to continue on with it. Um, shortly after I finished that I decided that I was going to make this a personal project and 
uh, finish it out and lose t a bunch of weight and uh, use the best camera equipment and the best methodologies I could. Um, I started reading heavily about uh, motion control cameras that were used on uh, Star Wars. Um, this When they started, it was back in the 60s and 70s. Um, but they're basically um, cameras that are hooked up to these articulated arms uh, controlled by computers, much the way that a robotic welder is controlled in like a Ford plant, but it can redo the same camera moves over and over again, uh, which has great implications for time-lapse photography of pretty much anything. Um, we'll talk about my initial research. Um, obviously, Edward Moybridge was the progenitor of all this material, uh, though he didn't deal with uh, time in the sense of showing uh, change. He did. He was the guy that started everything. I'll just freeze this real quick. Um, I was looking at trying to figure out how to light my body um, to show off muscle growth and, and fat loss. And uh, one big movie that came up in my head was uh, this guy Russell Carpenter was the director of photography on the Terminator films. And reading some of his old American cinematography interviews about how he lit Arnold to make him his muscles stand out using uh, blue key lighting, hard lights, uh, things like that to really show off muscle definition. This is from Terminator 1. Um, I started planning uh, all my positions and my lighting setups in a program called 3ds Max. I used these dummy models and a very basic skin shader to see interactively where I would need to put lights to get the best definition um, you can see some of the little adjustments I'm making here uh, with uh, just simulated lights and, and where they might be. This was also when I was going to shoot on a green screen, which I ended up not doing in the end, but uh, doing it in 3D is a very excellent way of, of planning an approach to something. Um, so you can see how these kind of correlate. Um, this video deals with building the motion control camera, and uh, I try not to comment too much, but uh, you can just watch it. These are early tests of uh, how this thing was going to build. I decided early on it was going to be just run on a ladder, trying to save costs. Those are roller skate wheels, even though the animation looks kind of neat. Uh, this is a budget that I submitted to the school for this thing, which has only ended up being about six or seven hundred dollars. This is a trip to Lowe's to get the needed materials. Somehow magically managed to get this ladder all the way in the my tiny Honda. It's my father who helped me build this camera system and design it. This is us kind of looking at components we have and taking measurements and specking them out. Those are stepper motors. That was a, um, that piece back there was a servo based RC head that we ended up not using just because uh, there was not a very good API to control it uh, in any of the software we found. But these are these initial drawings of this catamaran like system. This is me working in the architecture lab at uh, Virginia Tech building the uh, trolley system. Come on. And those are just roller skate wheels I got for about 32 bucks at the local uh, skate rink. That's Buddy. He's an instructor at the school. He was extremely helpful with this whole project. Very patient guy. Another great guy that helped me build all the sawhorses and stuff that the ladder sat on. 